Hi, everybody. JB back again. This is episode 30 of my series, Did You Ever Wonder? It's about Fayetteville's Angels in the Arkansas State, Arkansas, Missouri League, a Class D professional league that operated here in Northwest Arkansas, Southwest Missouri, 1934-1940. I wanted to end, like I told you at the last episode, I always end there with a fun one since I'm a baseball fanatic. I love baseball. Hope some of you guys do too. Uh, this first picture here on the title page, uh, this is the actual 1934 um, educators. <laughs> Isn't that a great name? They were only the educators in 1934. They call them the Eds. It was Fayetteville's team from 35 to 37, 30, 36. I can't, I'll have to, I'll show you a minute. They were the uh, Bears. And then they became the Fayetteville Angels, which a few people who remember remember them as the Angels. But anyway, so what they did was the they, before this we had town teams, semi-pro town teams, and uh, when, it, when it turned professional, uh, Fred Hahn over here in the corner was the manager of the semi-pro team. He became the manager of the pro team, and a player manager. He was a catcher. Uh, and I only know about three guys here, but I'd have to dig this stuff out just real quick. This fellow right in the middle of his hands together there, that's Russell Lefty Poole. That's my late friend, A.D. Poole's father. He pitched the very first professional game in Fayetteville history. Uh, next to him is my friend, D. Ness's grandfather, uh, Thornton Buchanan, who had the fantastic nickname of Hornbuckle Buck. So Thornton Hornbuckle Buck Buchanan, I absolutely love it. My favorite nickname of all time. And the guy on the end down here is Parker Rushing. Some of you may know his son and his wife, Marie Morris Rushing, was a friend of my mother's and poet. In 34, the first year of the professional league, Parker led the team in every single offensive category. So they had a pretty good year. So that's just some uh, intro stuff. By the way, the little boy here is not Sherman Lawler. Sherman was the bat boy for the uh, Bears and Angels from 36 to 39, as I call. I'll get to that later on. Anyway, so that's the 34 Eds. <laughs> the newspaper guy sorted the Eds right away. Okay, uh, just a real quick thing about how, how I came to write that book. In the summer of 98, my late brother-in-law, Kirby Estes, and my sister, Martha Hogan Estes, had saved me this article by Heather Serene about the Fayetteville Angels from a 1985 flashback. And it was basically a, a kind of a retelling of the next thing was Walter Lemke. The Fayetteville Angels, or why baseball is our national pastime, being a history of the Arkansas Missouri League back in 1952. And professor, that's Professor Lemke there. Uh, he actually covered the league. And if he'd written the book, there would have been absolutely no reason for me to write one. But his little booklet's only about 16 pages long. So I felt that left a little opening for me to jump in there and, and have a good time writing the history. Okay, so the beginning of this league, it's a the whole Arkansas State League was owned and operated, if you will, by the St. Louis Cardinals. It was their idea, and it was actually the brainchild of this man here, uh, Branch Rickey, who at that time was a vice president of the St. Louis Cardinals. So you're looking at the guy who actually came up with the current minor league system, except it was so, you know, they wanted everybody. They wanted all the teams, and they wanted to own all the teams in that league anyway. But that got broken up by Judge Kennesaw Mount Landis later on. But anyway, Brilliant man, brilliant idea. And you might remember that he's known for another reason, too. He had two really good ideas, one of which is he brought Jackie Robinson into baseball in 1947 and integrated Major League Baseball. In a person's lifetime, if they have one idea that changes things, that's pretty good. Ricky had two completely monumental baseball changing ideas. Now, maybe he got them, you know, from other people that work together, whatever. But he's credited with both those ideas, and that's pretty darn good. Okay, the Arkansas State, Missouri, Arkansas State, Arkansas, Missouri League exists, as I told you before, from 1934 to 1940, right through the heart of the Depression. Just nothing but trouble the whole time economically, as you can imagine. It was a professional Class D minor league. At that time, it was the lowest level. Uh, right up, I think, 61 is when they got rid of Class D. And it occurred during my, the minor league's first really big growth spurt back then. The, the ASL, AML, if you will, 
had nine teams over its course of its history, five from Arkansas and five from Missouri, which is why it later became the Arkansas Missouri League. And it was the ASL from 34 to 35 and the AML from 36 to 40. In 1937, uh, Venita, Oklahoma uh, joined the league and then dropped out the day before the season opened. So it had to operate as a five team league, which makes scheduling just a mess, but they managed to do it. Okay, and here's just, uh, I have a list here of the teams and their names. You can see the uh, Bears in 35, 36, and from 37 on there were the Angels. The story how they got, they were gonna be the Bears again in 37. They got some hand-me-down uh, uniforms from I think Ponca City, Oklahoma. <laughs> they were the Angels and they couldn't afford to re redo the uniforms. So they just became the Angels. <laughs> they were so poor, this little league, Class D. And there's Siloam. Let's see that first year we had the educators, the Buffaloes, the rustlers and the office holders <laughs> in Bentonville. And then later on, by I think by 36, 37, they start getting, maybe it's 37, they start getting uh, different teams backing, the different professional and major league teams backing the, the local teams, sometimes minor leagues as well. But you can see that uh, the league, and then 37, you can see we only got uh, five teams, so we need to drop out. Uh, if 34 and 40, they all, and 39, 40, they only had four teams that in the middle in there, they average six, a six team league. And here's a, a map of the area. So we got teams in Bentonville, Rogers, Fayetteville, Siloam, and in 1935 only Huntsville, Huntsville Redbirds in 1935. Isn't that great? One year Huntsville had a professional baseball team. When I went over there, <laughs> nobody had a clue that they'd ever had a baseball team. Up in Missouri, we had Cassville, right here's Cassville, Monette, and then uh, where we got here, Carthage up here and Neosho. And Carthage was the biggest town uh, in the league. Remember, the other thing I didn't put down here, these were tiny towns at the time. Don't think of Northwest Arkansas like it is now. Rogers and Bentonville and Siloam had less than 3,000 people. Each one of them was less than 3,000 people. So these were T tiny. It was considered the smallest minor league that ever existed. Okay, so this is a look at some of the champions. And I'm gonna go through all this stuff, but you can see in these early years, in the 34 and 35, that Rogers uh, dominated the league, the teams out of Rogers. And uh, even in the 37, and in 38, Carthage, Carthage comes in and they dominate the rest of the way with the exception of the regular season in 1939, in which the Fayetteville Angels won both halves of the split season. They were the only team to ever do that. They did lose in the playoffs to Carthage because they had nothing to play for. They'd won both halves. They had to make up a second place team, which was Carthage. And here are those 1939 Fayetteville Angels. And I'm gonna give you, it won't, I'm just gonna point out a few of them. In this front row, the guy on the left front, this guy down here at the bottom, that's Joe Zook. Uh, Limpke apparently liked him a lot. He was a little bit crazy. He tells the story of Zook throwing firecrackers out the window of their bus at people. And uh, a couple of guys here in the back, this big, tall, good-looking guy, George Bender. He was the, the number one pitcher for that team. He won 20 games. And this was their player manager in the center back. I get my cursor to even go in there. That guy right there, that's Frank Osiak. And I'm going to talk about him later. He was the player manager in Paris. He was really fiery. He actually got kicked out, he suspended for a few games and people actually paid his fine. The fans around the league paid the money to pay his fine to get him back in. But he was a real good player, scrappy kind of guy. Look how dirty the uniforms are. They couldn't afford to cut him clean. <laughs> and uh, I would have given anything to play him, but it was rough and tumble ball, with bad feels. <laughs> they had fights from time to time, they'd duke it out. It was a really interesting league. Anyway, so talk about some guys. You may, if you're a baseball fan, you will know who this is, Walker Cooper. He was a Cardinal catcher after he was in this league. He made it to the major leagues. And his brother, Mort Cooper, they were called a brother, brother, brother uh, battery, which is a pitcher catcher in baseball talk. He played under the name of Tom Cooper here. I don't know why, but he was what, and they, one description, he had a home run. They said it was like a, a dart. He hit a dart out. So you can imagine he was a really, 
really good player playing in a really small league. Uh, the next guy I want to mention, who was a player manager down here, was Ralph Houck. And you might remember him. He was a Yankees manager for a long time, won some, won some World Series. His bad luck was when he got up to the major leagues, Yogi Berra was there. Well, you're not going to displace Yogi. So he ended up you know, riding the pine, second string catcher, and became a really good manager. And there, of course, as I said, the bat boy for the Bears and the Angels, 36 to 39, I believe, was our Fayetteville native, Sherman Lawler, who made it to the big leagues, played many years for the White Sox. I wrote a letter, tried to get him into the, the Veterans Committee and the Hall of Fame, but I don't think it's going to work. But I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He had great records, great defensive catcher. When he was like, uh, in 1940, he was like seven, 16 or 17, big raw bone kid, and he was through being a bat boy. And he, he actually, in an exhibition game, played the Fayetteville Angels as part of a Fayetteville American Legion team, and he actually hit a home run off the pros. So you can see he was destined for bigger things. Uh, this is Pete Castiglione. The reason I have him up here is I actually got the email back and forth with Mr. Castiglione, who is a really nice man. He passed away several years ago. Really, really nice guy. I'm glad I got to talk to him. And this guy, Jerry Pretty, some of you may have heard him play for the Yankees for a while. This is, I have a whole segment in my book called Those Who Went Somewhere Who Went Bad. <laughs> this guy was involved in some kind of extortion plot for $250,000. He did a hard time, but that was kind of wild. And, uh, and there's Frank Osiak. And the reason I want to bring him back, I already talked about him. In 1958, my little league team, Coca-Cola here in Fayetteville, after the season, we got a trip to see the Cardinals in the, when they were on Grand Avenue down in downtown St. Louis at the old stadium. Uh, and I didn't know it at the time. Os and they played Pittsburgh Pirates. Frank Osiak was the third base coach for those Pittsburgh Pirates. And I remember going down there and, and getting uh, autographs and stuff. I, I would have actually seen him without having, having no idea who he was. But anyway, so that's Frank Osiak. And they played, just so you know, they played out at the old fairgrounds ballpark. I told you the old fairgrounds when I was a kid. They were out there on the Razorback Road, just up from MLK on the west side of the road. And if this had been the background of the old Fayetteville High before the renovation, obviously, a long time ago. This is from a Razorback annual. The Razorbacks played there back in the 50s. This was 58. And two years before this picture, I tried out for a little league right there at second base. <laughs> a little personal note. And then there is my Coca-Cola Little League team in 1958. That gigantic boy, that's Freddie Rice. Some of you probably know him. Played for the U of A basketball. This is uh, Rodney Carr, my best friend on the team. And that's me right there. And that's our coach, Jim Newport. And this is Rodney's little brother, Bobby Jill, right here. And this is Newt Lynn and, and Danny Phillips. That's kind of all I can remember just off the top of my head. We were a pretty good team. I, I was terrible that year, but we were a pretty good team. And the last thing on here uh, at the end of the episode is my book there. It's in the, in the in process of becoming revised and re, uh, reprinted. And so it doesn't exist anywhere. There may be a few copies left when my friend Perry Lawson had his old old school vintage store in Prairie Grove. Perry's done a great job of selling the books out there. But it'll be, it was supposed to be out this summer, but with the pandemic messing up the printing, I don't know when the book's going to be re-released, but it will be re-released hopefully by next year at least. So anyway, so that's all, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. My, I want to just end on the like, you know, nice easy note, talk about baseball. I can do it pretty much off the top of my head. And uh, I want to thank you all for doing this. That's uh, 10 more videos. That's 30 altogether. You'll probably be tired of it now. I don't know that I have another 10 in me. <laughs> I might have six or, or something like that, but I don't know if I have any more. And but anyway, I appreciate everybody for staying with me during all this time. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you very much. And I'll see you down the road. Bye-bye, everybody.